You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, and here from Drake Wing Gaming, a seven mile toward the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Shelter. I'm running the new update now. It's got plenty of extra content, about 24,000 words worth of content, y'all, and some new images and CGs and. Yeah, that's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot in this update. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and enjoy it. Anyway, y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Some say that strangers are friends we haven't gotten to know yet. You have a bunch of potential friends to meet here. If only you tried. Oh, I know. I am so insanely charismatic that I could befriend anyone at the flick of my finger if only I wanted. But I don't... but I don't. Stop projecting your desperation on me. I'm not pro Well, screw you too! What are you even doing here, then? One day you just come here and start talking- start stalking people like a creep. Then you steal my access keys, throw a dagger in my face? The dagger was in self-defense when you and Rune got me cornered. It wasn't even meant to hurt you, but merely to distract Rune. I knew he would catch it with, only, with his only remaining hand, granting me a surprise strike from, by, from his blind side. He must have felt pretty stupid when he defeated you with that same dagger, huh? You have no one to blame but yourself for playing dirty. Yes, I underestimated his prowess with light blades, and his general combat capabilities. But one day I will make him submit. Aw, is that why you're sticking around with us in shelter? You think, Ru you think of Rune as your rival? Is that the true reason why you, why you obscure one of your eyes, too? No, the eye patch is just a completely unrelated coincidence. A tragic backstory, remember? And no, I don't care about that dumb husky. That stupid, always smiling idiot. Every time I see him, I just want to... Stupid, stupid, I don't care. Alan crosses his arms and pouts, a low, quiet growl rumbling in his throat. I cover my mouth to hide my smile. It's so easy to tease him sometimes. I'm glad I always knew that Alan would grow to care about the other dog someday. Rivalry is good enough. It's a well-known fact that 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 is often the first step towards the closest friendships. We had a bit of a rough start with Alan at Shelter. A few months ago, we noticed a new canine stalking around the corridors and observing us from afar. Whenever any of us tried to approach him, he would flee. I kept going for weeks. It felt a bit creepy, and the dog suggested hunting him down and interrogating, but I decided not to pay him much mind. He was acting a bit quirky, but he wasn't hurting anyone. That was until I caught him searching through my room. He pushed me away and fled, holding a stack of my shelter access keys in his hand. I gave chase after him. It was a wild chase over multiple sections of shelter, but with the help of the dogs, we managed to corner him. It was specifically me and Rune who met him at the dead end. Alan looked desperate. He threw a dagger at me from across the corridor, and when Rune leaped in to catch it with his bare hand, the wolf attacked the husky. Rune didn't have his own weapons with him, so the, ro so the rogue must have thought that he could take him down with a bit of diversion and taking advantage of the husky's limited vision. However, Alan miscalculated greatly. The wolf could be acting like an edgelord, but Rune was the true blade master of shelter. With blinding speed, the husky dodged Alan's attacks and used a short throwing knife to perform a series of swift counter-strikes that overwhelmed the wolf and kept him constantly on the defensive. In a matter of seconds, Rune had Alan pinned against the wall with a dagger pressed at his throat. He was forced to give back my keys, and we had a very serious conversation. Alan wouldn't tell us what he wanted to do with the keys. Bernie and Rude assumed he was a spy from the outside. They wanted to banish him with a threat of death if he ever returned. They were growling and barking on. I remember that at one point I got very angry at them. I forced him to leave me alone with Alan, and the two of us talked in private. He wouldn't tell me what he was doing with the keys, either. Not that it mattered to me too much. I told him that if he wanted access to any specific room, he should have just asked. That surprised him. I consider myself a good judge of character, and after a short chat, I had a strong impression that he didn't mean us any harm. In my eyes, he was more quirky than dangerous. The canines can be like that. I told him that he could stay at shelter only if he promised to never steal anything again and if he started and if he, and if he started integrating with us, like if he came to our tavern once in a while. The next week, he approached me at the bar and handed me a bag full of coins and a sum equal in value to roughly one year's spending of an average regular customer. This ought to cover my whole stay here until the fateful night we part forever, he said. It was weird, but I accepted it. He then started coming to the tavern regularly, like he promised, always sitting by the same table in the darkest corner. He still avoids interacting with the other dogs, and sometimes it seems like it's wishful thinking to expect him to open up to us, but I know for sure that it's going to happen one day. It's already happening gradually. I've even heard that he has been spotted observing Rune's training classes, and some say that he even challenged him to a duel. In small ways, Alan is starting to get more involved with us. Why are you smiling? Stop it! Second yell, water time. Ah. 
Sorry, sorry, I was just thinking. You asked why I chose this life, and I think my reason isn't, isn't anything special. I don't think that anyone is fit to be alone. Not me, not any of the dogs, not even you. Shelter gives us a place to be together, and it changes people for the better. It puts minds at ease. It lets everyone live as they truly are, unrestrained by outside politics or our pasts. I think that that's something worth dedicating one's life for. Alan's eye na eyes narrow at me with an inquisitive stare. It's hard to tell if he's satisfied with a cheesy reply like that or not. Not that I particularly care. He asked a question, and I answered honestly. Puts minds at ease, huh? Tell me, how long has it been since the last time you went outside for more than a day? Oh, long time. Many, many months. I don't really need to leave shelter anymore. I have everything I need here. Uh, Burry takes care of supplies from Morzeburg. I glance back at Burry, and I see that the last, ga the last guests just finished their chat with him, and they are on their way out. I wave at the big dog, but he doesn't notice me in the shadows. I see. I can hear a cigarette butt landing in the ashtray, when I, and when I look back at Alan... He's gone! He's not in his seat anymore. About the Basset and his Pyrenees. He stands right by one of the columns instead, in an even darker shadow. They're, they're both into each other. What? Really? But one of them is too demure, to other, and the other too thick-headed to connect naturally. Without an outside intervention, they will never realize that their lust is mutual. Really? If you want to meddle, Max's performance could be a good time. They're both going to be attending. If that really is what you want. After that, Alan dives into the shadows, and I can't see him anywhere anymore. The wolf is gone, and the only sounds in the tavern are those of Burry walking around and putting the lights out. I can't help but smile as I collect his mug and ashtray off the table. I'm going to give them a quick wash before I go. He really is a good guy. I've never regretted my decision to keep him here. In his own weird way, he cares. Thanks, Alan. Also, if you tell anyone about the eye patch, I will slit your throat in your sleep. I won't! Get the hell out! Ah. Eh. Alan. After helping Burry tidy up and close the tavern, I'm still left with a choice of how I want to spend my afternoon. I can either go back to the tavern and cook with Burry, go train with Rune, or jam with Max outside. All those options sound good, but I can choose only one. Who should I go with? Uh, spend the rest of the afternoon with Burry, okay? Yeah, girl. Blinding white snow. It's blinding, I say! I hadn't known what true cold felt like until I set, set my foot into these lands. Coming here from the warm south, I only had a vague idea about the precautions that had to, had to be taken when venturing into those, into those lands. Advice from people of the stronger furred races. I quickly found out how much harsher this venture would be, would be to someone like me as, I, as compared to them. My body is much frailer, and yet the cold is indiscriminate in how hard it strikes. These lands do not welcome life come here is to challenge nature itself. Only the monsters can thrive here. With each passing day of this white hell, I grew to appreciate all the basic things that I always took for granted. Once my rations ran out, I craved a piece of bread or a sip of water. When the ever-present chills seeped warmth out of my body, I longed for cover. All the other worries were distant and trivial. No matter how grand the dreams or ideals one holds, it all turns to nothing once the vessel breaks. Finally, I fell. Everything hurt. My whole body. I would gladly take the pain of being slashed by a sword over the overwhelming torture of what felt like countless cold daggers stabbing from inside. I had heard someone once say that when one's body gives up from the cold, the final moments were supposed to feel warm and pleasant. A big part of me wanted to feel that fake warmth. But the faint flame inside me still refused to give up. I would survive it somehow. After just a short rest, I would stand back up and continue. In these lifeless lands at the edge of the world, I knew I, f I, knew I would find my purpose. After just a short rest. Second now. Water time. Please, open your eyes. Come on, I beg of you. I heard someone's voice, and I was only barely able to feel my numb body being shaken over and over. I didn't feel as pleasant as the dreams that were taking over me just a moment earlier. The voice and the shaking brought my attention back to how awful my body felt. It felt real. No! No! The voice cracked and I felt something heavy resting over my chest. I heard sobbing. With great effort, I opened my eyes. I was being held in a big canine's arms and he was crying into my chest, tears rolling down his cheeks in tremendous despair. Such a beautiful, kind dog. I raised my trembling hand to wipe his cheek, but I was surprised to find that the tears had already frozen into ice. 
caught in his fur. The dog jarred his eyes open and turned his face to stare at mine. I chuckled seeing the ice under his eyes, and I think that I tried to tell the dog some joke about how cold it was or something, but the words wouldn't leave my throat. Yes, please, speak to me! Do not fall asleep! The canine said, and I felt my body bumping up and down as we started to run. I have a shelter nearby with fire and food. Just hold on a little longer and we'll get there! I heard him say, but the words started to blur. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you for being alive! I do not care who you are or where you hail from. I swear to you that I will not let your heart cease its beating any sooner than mine does. I will. I will. He shouted something so loudly that the rumble of his chest echoed throughout my whole body. But the exact words eluded me. Despite his pleading, I fell asleep again. It's funny that I was looking for something in these, in these vast, cold lands. But in the end, I was the one who was found. By Burry. And then we found his friends and each other. Then we found friends in each other. We went through a lot together. We fought all kinds of obstacles to reach where we are right now. The challenges never end, and they only seem to escalate in difficulty. But that's all fine. Together, we can take whatever the world throws at us. And because we are still alive. First how. The call to life. Let me ask you one last time. Are you certain that you do not want to go out today? It is your afternoon. You can do whatever you please today. Yeah, I want to spend it with you. Even though we do this every day as our job? Yes, even though. The reason I chose this lifestyle in the first place is because I like doing what we do. And, you know, I like your company. Burry chuckles and scratches his head in a hint of happiness and embarrassment. His fluffy tail wags gently. As I do yours. Thank you. Besides, if I went to see Max or Rune, I bet I would get tangled into something stupid or potentially dangerous again. I want the rest of this day to pass as peacefully as possible. I understand. Both you and them seem to somehow attract problematic situations. Rest assured that you will be able to have your repose to your, your repose here. Totally. Our kitchen is like a shenanigan-free zone. I cannot guarantee your safety at the baths, though. Both Max and Rune are... Just themselves. I'll deal with them somehow. Don't you worry. Hey, Burry, what are you holding in your hand? Oh, this? Burry opens his hand and shows me some kind of a smooth little rock, roughly the size of half my thumb. It's nicely polished and the light reflects off of it in a beautiful way. I lean closer for a better look as I have never seen anything like this before. What could it possibly be? A piece of jewelry? I found it under one of the tables. I thought that if you were going outside, you could have returned it to the owner. But whose table was it? Shuck was sitting there. You know, the, uh, the old terrier. Yes, but it doesn't belong to him. This little thing smells very much like teak. Teak? Could it be a relic? Take it down. Water time. I guess this is going to be the Burry run, huh? I would not know, and I do not want to tire you with mana investigation any more than you already have today. It matters little. If you have decided to stay here this afternoon, I will simply return it to him in the morning before I set off to Morzeburg. For now, how about we cook something tasty? We still have a few hours before the evening comes. Heck yeah! What do you want to teach me today? I fasten my apron and start playing around with my favorite knife. I'm not the cook in the tavern. That's Burry's role. I can peel the ingredients to stir the pots when necessary, but I always considered actual cooking as something too hard for me to get, get any good at. However, Burry convinced me one day to give it a try, give it a try under his guidance. He wanted to share with me the, that passion and show me that anyone could learn how to cook. The results were absolutely horrible at first. Burry took his eyes off me for only a moment, and I somehow managed to burn things that he didn't even know were physically possible to burn. It, tur it turned out that I had an incredible, an incredible anti-talent for cooking, and I was a threat to myself in the kitchen. Burry, however, still believed in me. I tried again another day. Barry wouldn't take his eyes off me, even for a moment, even for a moment that time, but I still did everything with my own hands, following his instructions. The results of that one were uh, unforgettable. In the best way, it was a simple broth, but it was absolutely delicious. Somehow food cooked with my own hands tasted even better to me than Burry's, even though it was his recipe, and objectively my attempt was inferior to his expertise. Hard work has always been known for the be to be the best of spices, he said. When you create something with your own effort, it is always special. That is true to all things in life. Cooking is a vast topic, but Barry convinced me that in the end, it all simply comes down to following instructions. When you follow the same process, you reach the same result. So we started cooking together more often. I still fail a lot, but Barry told me that that's a good thing, too. He said that expertise is built on the ground of numerous failures. 
I don't know if he really meant that or if he just wanted me wanted to encourage me. Oop. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.